The intertidal region of the Gulf of Maine is home to many bizarre animals. Barnacles, sea anemones, many different types of shrimp, green crabs, rock crabs, hermit crabs, lobsters, chitons, limpets, dog whelks, periwinkles, nudibranchs, blue mussels, sea stars, daisy brittle stars, and sea urchins. All these animals call the different strata of the intertidal region home. When the tide recedes, it leaves behind pools of water all along the coast. In these tidal pools, you have all these different animals who are stuck with each other until the tide comes back. You'll see them fight each other, taste each other, smell each other, and mate with each other. Most of all, these animals are gonna to try to figure out how to eat each other. Let's focus on sea stars. Sea stars have such a cool, weird way of eating other animals. They love blue mussels and clams. A sea star will wrap its arms around a mussel, pry open its shell, and expel its own stomach out of its mouth. It'll shove its stomach inside the clam or mussel and digest the mussel in its own shell. And that's not the only trick the sea stars have up their sleeves. While the sea stars are out on the tidal pool floor looking for mussels and clams, there's other critters in the tidal pool out looking for them. Crabs and other crustaceans love to eat the fleshy limbs of the sea stars. And luckily for the sea stars, as long as the crab only eats two or three of its arms, it can grow half of its body back and be well on its way. While we're talking about crazy animals in the tidal pools, let's take a look at the sea anemone. The fact that a sea anemone is an animal alone is amazing. The sea anemone has a tubular body it attaches to the seafloor and poisonous tentacles that move with the current. When an unsuspecting prey comes by, the sea anemone will stun its prey and pull it into its mouth. But not all animals are deterred by the sea anemone's poison. In fact, sea slugs like the nudibranch gobble them up. And the sea slug has a particular reason it eats these sea anemones. It doesn't generate poison on its own, but uses the poison from the sea anemone that it eats to activate their own stinging tentacles that they have on their backs, making them less likely to be gobbled up by larger predators.